Hello! Yes, I do have half of my makeup missing and to find out why then either watch Robin's video that I've linked down below because this is where I took the inspiration from well, I didn't really take inspiration at all, I literally just downright copied her because I thought what she had done was genius and very insightful and I wanted to do the experiment for myself to see how I do feel about my face with no makeup on compared to my face with makeup on so I wanted to see that exact side by side comparison to see what I genuinely do think of myself so if you want to see what products I've used, my little routine um, to get this half of my face looking the way it did then watch on. For me I feel like my biggest difference is how my skin looks and my eyebrows and my lips because I have absolutely no top lip at all and it'd be nice if I had one and sometimes when I have lipstick on it looks like I do have one. So the first thing I do in terms of makeup is I'm sorry if you are seeing this for like the 7,000th time but it's my white rabbit orange and aloe toner which is if you can hear that empty yeah I think that's like deceased now that's ready to go into the graveyard of empties skincare is the most important step in a makeup routine because if your skin isn't ready your makeup ain't gonna sit right is it and then I will use, this is new and is my last hurrah before I go for some kind of surgical thing to reduce the scarring on my face here. So this is the Science of Skin Solution for Scars and it's scientifically proven to reduce scarring but I think that's for new scars, mine are very old but I thought I'd give it a go anyway. Um, my scarring is really prominent down by my temples here, all over my cheeks but it's thankfully not so bad on my forehead, nose or chin. It's supposed to rub that in for about a minute until it's fully dissolved into your skin but because I have thirsty skin it's absorbed already. My last skin prep skincare is the Rosehip and Cam Cam Camellia Day Cream uh, which is for sensitive skin and that is White Rabbit again. My skin saviours of course. So I'll just put a little couple of Oops. And because this uh, day cream moisturiser, however you would like to word it, is quite like tacky. I feel like it works perfectly as a primer. So occasionally, if my skin is feeling it, I will skip out using actual primer and I will just put my foundation and concealer straight on but I will will use my primer and I use the collection primed and ready mattifying pore minimizer which is this thing right here and I put a lot of it in like the crease of my nose because that is always where makeup like flakes for me And then I'm moving on to my eye primer, which is the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion. It's the original one, which is just in this pretty purple packaging. Excuse my nails, they are rather rotten at the moment. <laughs> up to the brow, because that is occasionally where I will put some eyeshadow. And I just pat that in with my finger. <laughs> Foundation time. I have been using the Urban Decay Naked Skin foundation for I'm gonna say over a year now. I'm 1.0 which isn't actually the palest but I think because I've been using this foundation for so long now that it's just not really working for me anymore and I don't know if that's because my skin's different or it's just because you can see quite a big colour difference between my skin and the foundation just from me dotting it around. So I'm just going to use this Real Techniques brush. What is it called? This one to um, sweep it around. Once I have done that, I will use my Beauty Blender to um, make sure I don't have any patches.
Oh, my foot's going dead. 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 Ah. Concealer time. I was turned to the Revolution Conceal and Define in C2 and I was very gutted at how quickly that ran out for me. It's empty now, so I'm going to have to try and get another one. And my other one is, of course, The Last Imperfection by Collection, which I have in probably the lightest shade, I'm assuming. Yeah, fair one. They should probably have more shades than they do, but let's see if we can get anything out of this. Oh, we've got a little bit left. See if I can draw a line down my nose with it. Ooh, that's so funny. I know I probably don't have to be this precise, but I'm just feeling like it. It's fun. And just covering up my reddest scars. So that's pretty much my entire face. And I will use my beauty blender to just buff that in. There we go, can you see that difference? Because I feel like the difference between my naked skin and my Happen to care naked skin is huge. Like that difference is unreal to me. Like my eye looks really weird. <laughs> Much like Robin, I do feel like this is going to be the shocker where I do my eyebrows, well, eyebrow, just one eyebrow, and it's going to be like, shit. So the products that I've been using, I do chop and change between two. Um, but since I have had this for a very long time. I'm going to say at least three years ago, I bought the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Pomade, which is this pretty thing right here, and I got it in ebony because I had, believe it or not, black hair three years ago, and it also is looking a little bit worse for wear in there. That is a little grim. I don't think anybody's looks like that apart from mine, because, and I'll give you one of my beauty tips, probably the only beauty tip that I have, and it's really gross, so don't judge me. I'm going to br brush my brow first. I, um, oh, this brush is just from Wilkers. This is the issue with my brows, right? They're really quite long eyebrow hairs, but because they're so sparse and dispersed and light that looks like I don't have any. Oh, but yeah, the, the other brow product, I'm just getting all excited about putting my eyebrow on. Um, the one that I've discovered recently is this Freedom Duo Brow Powder, which I picked up from Superdrug for only £1.50. So it looks like this, and when you open it up, it's got a cute little mirror in it, and these two brow colours here, as you can tell, is the dark one, and as you can tell by the look of it, I've also made a mess of that one. Rosie tells me off because I can never get brow products to smoothly apply to my face unless the brush is wet. And I wet said brush, this is my beauty tip, by spitting on it. And that sounds gross. A little bit of spit on your finger, rub the brush in it, put it in your product, and it just goes on so much cleaner, in my opinion anyway, and it's so much quicker. So that is what I am about to do. And now I don't talk because I have to concentrate or this goes wrong. Another reason I do the spit trick is to dilute the colour because obviously I no longer have black hair now so I don't want to have jet black like marker pen eyebrows with ginger hair. Um, with this product it does go on lighter but for some reason I just felt the need to use this one today. And now because I'm absolutely no beauty guru I clean up the edges by rubbing my finger on them. So here where it's gone just a little bit too low and down here where I don't feel like it's pointy enough, I just rub my finger along it. And ta-da! Eyebrow! So I think <laughs> I think the difference is pretty obvious right here between the makeup side and the non-makeup side now. Um, but luckily I'm not the kind of person who won't feel comfortable living their life without their makeup on. Um, and I'm very happy that I am that way and I feel for girls who aren't that way or guys that aren't that way because like for me anyway makeup's an enjoyable thing to do and I like taking my time with it and I enjoy doing it and like Robin said makeup is magic 
because it is and it's so much fun and I wouldn't want that fun taking away from me because I feel like I have to do this every day in order to go outside or even not to go outside just to be getting on with my day um I feel like that would ruin that part of the magic for me but next we'll be moving on to eyeshadow and before we get started on eyeshadow I have eczema on my eyelids let's have a little zoom hello this is my eyebrows close up but if you can see I have moisturized and primed but here and here I usually have quite aggressive eczema I think it's coming across here and there yep so yeah not many people t tend to like pick up on my eczema or talk to me about it um even when I'm posting like close-up photos of makeup looks that I've done um but even in person people don't like look at me funny and they're like oh you've got something on your eyelid um but I have had eczema my whole life I used to have it all over my forehead when I was younger and I had a big block fringe to cover it I then got it on the backs of my knees, my elbows, like everywhere and it's a very uncomfortable and painful thing but weirdly enough having it on my eyelids is the least uncomfortable way I've had it so far. Usually I would use a base colour from the Urban Decay Naked Basics palette, the tiny little one Rosie got me for my birthday, however it's in my drawer over there and I cannot be bothered to get up and get it. So I am going to be doing my everyday makeup, the eye look that I go to most often and that is from the Venus palette which if this is not the most beautiful thing you've ever seen you are lying. I got this palette years and years and years and years ago, it was the first, this one and the Venus 2 grunge palette were the first eyeshadow palettes I ever got and for a very long time they were the only ones I ever had or used. If I tilt on the side you can see which ones I use the most and those are the ones I'm going to be using today. Like just isn't it the most beautiful thing I've ever seen? Oh, I want the Venus XL so bad. But it's just massive. I don't think I could like allow myself to buy that. So the brushes I'm using are from this beautiful little Morphe thing and it is these two. If you can see there's a fluffy brush here. It's not the biggest fluffy brush that's in there but it's the right one and then there's this quite stubby dense one. Let's go with the eyes. I do my inner cor cor corner with Aura which is, let me hide my face so it focuses. This one right here, the shiny, pearly, beautiful thing. Making my eczema shiny. And then I use the transition shade Divine right here. Whoop. And just filling in the rest of my eyelid. And now that is all nicely blended out. I am most likely going to ruin it with, oh shall I use Muse or Venus, they're quite similar. Muse is this colour right here, this pretty deep red, um, Venus has a bit of a shimmer to it but I thought I'd just use Muse and that is on the outer corner and just underneath my lid. Then we'll move over to the slightly denser brush, pat it into Muse and then go under the lid just underneath the lash line. Watching Robin do this bit with like, she was like looking in the other direction whilst doing it, I was like shit son. Um, I don't have many good makeup habits because I did not start properly wearing makeup at all until I was 19, 20. I'm 23 now. I started uni when I was 19 which is where I met Rosie. Rosie's really into makeup. Um, I can't do a video without talking about Rosie apparently and she like taught me how to properly do my eyebrows, what contouring was, what highlighter was, what blending eyeshadow was and before then I was literally just walking around with like absolutely no eyebrows and constantly just copper eyeshadow every day and just big eyeliner. That was my life because <laughs> I lived through the scene kid movement of the early 2000s and it was the best thing in the world. I loved it so much. So we'd all walk around with our humongous fringes and ridiculously huge pink backcombed hair, pink neon eyeliner, literally just going from down here to up here. It was huge. Um, it was great though. But that, that was as far as my makeup experience went until I met Rosie. So there we go, that's the eyeshadow done. Let's do a little zoomy zoom again. So, ta-da! This is the difference between 
my non-eyeshadowed naked eye and my eyeshadowed pretty eye. And I still can't stop looking at my eyebrows. The colour difference is hilarious. Oh dear me. Look, this is what I mean about how sparse they are. They just suck. It's good you can see my freckles as well. Blimey. And moving on to the trusty eyeliner, always liquid. I tried the whole felt tip thing and it just wasn't for me. It really wasn't for me. Um, eyeliner was the first ever makeup I wore. It was what my mum would let me wear and it was always, as I mentioned before, some kind of neon pinky colour that I bought from Blue Banana and I just loved it. Like I'd go in to Blue Banana on a Saturday with my friends and we'd be buying all of the really brightly coloured, which was weird considering how like goth and emo we were, we were buying all of these insanely bright coloured stuff, like all the criminal damage hoodies. Does anyone remember the black ones? And they'd have, it was either pink or green, I remember a lot of star prints all over them. And they had the holes in the thumbs, um, in the sleeves, the thumb holes. <laughs> I'm getting really excited. The thumb holes in the sleeves and you'd pull the sleeves over your hand and your thumb could stick out the holes. I remember those. That was like the uniform for my friends and those black parade jackets and I was always the fucking weirdo in the corner that was wearing pinstripe jeans and a fluorescent pink tutu and some criminal damage t-shirt with the skull hands on the boobs or something like. I was out there and we also used to, this is completely off on a tangent, I'm not talking about makeup anymore. We um, all used to switch shoes which made no sense considering my feet have been a size 3 since primary school. They just haven't grown. And I'm not quite sure how we all used to do it, but we all bought Converse or Dunlops or whatever, and we'd switch a shoe. Oh, DCs were a big one as well. I remember buying those in a size four or five and hoping my feet would grow into them and they never did. I wonder where those shoes are. Probably at my parents' house. Um, but we'd all switch shoes and we'd wear one of our own shoes and one of our friend's shoes. This is, I'm really happy teenagers don't still do this because it was so strange, but it was probably a lot safer than the Tide Pod situation. Uh, but we'd write like Panic at the Disco, Fallout Boy lyrics on them, and it was just a my chemical romance. That was literally like my heyday. That was me living my best life right there. So, so in homage, 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 someone please teach me how to pronounce that word properly. I shall be doing my eyeliner, but I shall try and do it in a much more subtle way than I did 10 years ago. 10 years ago. I was 13 10 years ago. So I use the NYX Matte Liquid Liner which is whoop, right here. But again I have to do a thing where I concentrate and not speak otherwise this is going to go wrong. <laughs> so sharp it could kill a man and I just realized I usually do my mascara before my eyeliner which is quite a weird way to do it but never mind I've gone back to this way the mascara I've been using at the moment is the Too Faced Better Than 6 mascara which has the prettiest packaging The reason I usually do my mascara first before my eyeliner is because sometimes my eyeliner will like seep onto my eyelashes and solidify and it makes it quite hard to put mascara on top of it. And there's the top. Ooh, pretty. And I'll do the bottom lashes as well. And that is my mascara done. Also, I love the shape of this mascara wand. It's got like a curve in the middle. Okay, so now we move on to the part of my makeup that I'm still not 100% with, and that is bronzer. And let's just have a moment for the fallen comrade. My brush has broken. So that's great. This is a bronzer from MUA. Here, it says it on the back. Perfect. Ta da! So this is the MUA Bronze Perfection Matte in Sunset Tan, and I am not a solid contourer so that is why I choose to use bronzer instead with my broken brush that I'm trying to, trying my best to hold on to but I usually just try my best to put some kind of definition in my face by lightly sweeping a bit of colour around 
wow that looks bad on camera it doesn't look that bad in real life but I will also sweep it around my hairline and my forehead just to make it not look so blatantly obvious on my cheek and now we move on to highlighter and this is the undress your skin shimmer highlighter in radiant cashmere and I really don't want to open it whilst showing it to you because it did smash at some point and now falls apart and give it a good old ooh, a wiggle there we go that glow that glow and now for what will hopefully make my lips you know there it'd be nice I use the body shop hemp lip balm which Rosie again introduced me to when she used to work at the body shop so I'm gonna put it on all over because I'm wanting that right now and I don't care that I'm doing my half and half makeup mm, this is Sasha from the girls 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 collection that I got quite a while ago it was part of a bundle it was a nudes one and they were named after uh, supermodels or something I think so let's zoom you in again oh do you like my little freckle so let's see how this is gonna work <laughs> I am pretty bad at putting liquid lipstick on so you know Ta-da! This is my half and half face. And to finish it off, I will use my fixing spray. This is the I Heart Makeup Fixing Spray and it smells so good. It's kind of like this weird amaretto smell and I think I need to buy some more. So I'll just spray half of my face. Hmm. Oh my god, it smells so nice. So here is my made up face and here is my naked face. side by side it's just like I don't think any one side of me is better looking or I don't know like I'm very very comfortable with my natural naked face and I'm very comfortable with my makeup skill on this side of my face I think both look great and I have come to the conclusion that I don't think I do actually look that different it's still weird and one other thing that beauty side of the world of the community that is literally just like natural look and just mascara and like clear lip gloss and just powder shitting on people that choose to transform themselves through the art it is art of makeup can go fuck themselves if you're not going to support your female community or community at all then literally just get to fuck I don't want anything to do with you because makeup is fucking incredible. On a level of confidence, I definitely do feel more confident with my makeup on. Like a lot of people see it as like some form of warping and that kind of stuff and I am here for that. I am so here for that. But again, I have no worry in like having my picture taken or being around certain people when I don't have makeup on. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, it just, it does elevate that confidence level a little bit. Like I'll walk down the street like, hmm. I look good, I look good and if you don't have that experience every once in a while you're going to feel really shitty about yourself. I wouldn't necessarily say it's part of representing myself um, but it is definitely a way of expressing myself and looking like the person I want to be. It really does change the way you are that day and the beauty of it is you can just take it off at the end of your day and be another version of yourself that you want to be the day after. This is just a tangent of thoughts that I'm having, but you know, I think, I think I'm right. I have left Robin's video and her channel linked down below, so make sure you go and check out her video of this, which is what I have um, taken inspiration from because I have no original content ideas myself, so I'm stealing other people's content. Don't worry, she does know I'm doing this. Um, but hers is really incredible and the things she says about makeup are really insightful so go ahead and watch that and if you enjoy looking at my face then feel free to subscribe maybe like this video because you know that'd be a nice little confidence booster for me and i will see you later <laughs>